Okay, everyone, this is my spoiler review of The Curse, Episode 5. It's a good day. Make sure to hit that sub button before I jump into my review so don't miss one of my reviews of The Curse. Now, we get to see the first official episode of Flipanthropy getting filmed, and we see the first couple that is going to look at this passive home. They literally open the episode with this shot of this couple, and the husband is already dripping sweat before he even gets into the house. And you see from the director's chair that Whitney wants all of it to be positive. What's said about the house, the experience they're having, where Dougie already wants a blend. Now, you have all these theories about what Dougie's full intentions are here and that we already know from the first episode that he is trying to catch video and audio of them where they don't know they're being recorded and that he's definitely making some type of show about them they don't know about and that is so much hinted here when the sound guy is taking in the audio clearly and Whitney's catching on to it and so is Asher even at one point that he's getting of everything and them talking and like we've already talked about in other reviews how much of this is filmed not only from a voyeuristic standpoint but a lot of these shots are really framed like you'd film a hidden camera show and I thought in this episode particularly when Asher finds that Dougie has his phone that scene really was filmed exactly how you do a hidden camera show so you wonder there whether it's has to do with someone who has an eye them with the curse or someone that has a camera on their body whatever it is it could be also that we can make theories and all these but at the end of the day it might just be symbolic of that and not where those people from that perspective watching the show the curse that we're watching happening so it might not not be any kind of reveal of someone actually filming here. Now we know with Whitney compared to Asher and Dougie that she's trying to keep these moral standards about everything going on with the tribe and with this show and that they can't break them but this is where Asher is still alluding to you know we should still have them sign the contract even if they don't agree this letter support the tribe. I also love too when Whitney catches that the sound guy was recording them that Asher then tries to flirt and he's like maybe I can record you sometime making you I won't say that word but it's just funny that Asher can't even flirt right but you see Asher's trying to ease the couple into supporting the playboys in the tribe signing the letter and they are not happy about not knowing ahead of time about these issues now you'll see when the tour begins everything starts to go upside down immediately and of course Asher gets his mention in about the LED lights so a callback to him having that idea for the casino and Whitney goes the toilet water comes from the sink and the wife goes oh kind of like a prison and at one point the husband goes cool so we'd be paying $850,000 to live in a prison it's a big theme of the episode about this being like a prison I'm going to point out moments too where they keep that theme up visually and now the big issue happening for this show is that the husband is still dripping sweat. He's like, it's real hot in here. Can I get a water? And in this moment, you see how Whitney actually kills it with her joke about faking that she burned her hand on the stove. And Asher totally destroys it by going, and maybe you should grab your metal trays because the menu today is mashed potatoes with gravy. And Emma Stone's face here was priceless at him just killing all momentum of humor there. But see, Whitney shares that a passive home never goes over 78 in the summer. But the husband's like, that's hot. You see, he's calling them out for all their inconsistencies. He's like, so don't open any doors or any windows. And Asher's like, unless you want it to get hot or cold. And the husband says, like a thermos. And the wife goes, or a prison. So the prison joke comes back. And Whitney is so sick of it. And it just makes the whole passive idea look really bad. Now, I'd already mentioned the scene about it was shot like a hidden camera show with Asher finding Dougie with his phone. And he put the dating apps on it. And he's caught doing this. But there's also part of it where Dougie also probably wanted to, if he is filming this for his other show, that he wanted to get this reaction out of Asher and get caught but either way the thing about him saying he was joking there's a part of Dougie we already know that likes Whitney more than just a friend and more than a co-worker so you know he would love to get Asher and her split up that's that part of Dougie that's definitely gonna be more explored and that's hinted at here now like when Whitney had the problem with Vic who got rid of the stove they wanted to keep in the passive home and it would lose the certification for the home now she's having that problem with this couple wanting to buy an AC and he's like oh my brother will get us a free one and they're basically telling her the certification is not important to them and she's like well this is one of 12 houses in new mexico that is certified passive you could be a part of history and they just don't care at all now one of my criticisms for this episode though is that it does feel like we're getting too repetitive on some of those themes and beats where we just had a lot of this with Vic. I get that it's really trying to drive the point home, but I feel like it still could be a little shortened down a bit. And now I'm feeling kind of going in a circle at parts here. Now we cut to one of my favorite moments in the episode is Asher's notes app. 
and he says in caps it says jokes for show and it says be self-deprecating parentheses james corden which had me dying and then he has the joke ready your energy bill will be cheaper than my haircut which he'll say later on to the man with the long hair and he has to write in his notes avoid race-based humor that's not even already in his brain he has to actually put that in a notes app and now whitney is trying to just now shove the letter to support the tribe onto this couple they want nothing to do with it she generalizes and says it's just letters showing of support but underlying factor here is it's also giving the tribe ownership of their property which of course they're not going to really want and when she says it's a letter showing you support the tribe the wife is like what if we don't so it's a complete bomb drop here that just has whitney done with it and it leads to asher doing another bombing prison joke where he's like let's not pull out all the shanks we don't want the warden to get mad at us and the wife says she's a lot and this one asher has this weird hesitation moment where he's deciding if he should stick up for her here or not and defend her and he completely loses his cool and snaps at her but then he goes to Whitney and the way he approaches Whitney about all this that they can reword the letter to make this couple still buy she's like are you defending them now so he can't even get it right on like how to support his wife that would make her happy and this will start this downfall for Asher and Whitney's relationship in this episode and Asher still honing in on getting that money and selling this house not totally sticking with Whitney's moral decision of not signing with someone with a Blue Lives Matter flag in this character played by Dean Cain which we're going to get to now this is where Dougie for the show's purpose suggests the Hail Mary card and opens up that he did a show with all these fake people coming on and it wasn't real and that he's like we need someone just to fake it now and this is where Whitney calls in Kara from episode two. Now Kara will bring up the crime in the area that Whitney's not addressing. She's making a joke out of this and that will come back to when the AD on the show Tanya will tell Whitney about the guy who was shot in her car and that Whitney will say oh well she changed the headline for that and totally negates that so it's a good call too on people who are so zoned in on making a neighborhood that really isn't safe look safe even though you still have to address when there's actually crime somewhere now you're just fabricating facts and i love when asher and whitney are talking about how bad it went with kara and he's bringing up blue lives matter character that my favorite shot of the episode has to be when they're framing it them talking and then there's just inside of a woman's apartment with a fan blowing on her i thought with the music here it was just hysterical the melancholy score was great and it was horrifying when she looked at the camera at the end but it also just reminds you to how hot it is there and that they were trying to sell a passive home to these people and you see how this woman literally has to have a fan blowing on her that was a strange scene with Kara and Dougie when Dougie's calling her out and saying that cigarettes are gross and that's gonna, gonna kill her and then he brings up that his wife died which is really weird for him to just say right there but that's Dougie right I just not a fan of this character of Kara I don't know what they're going out with the character of Kara but she's just so unlikable to me so it's hard to have her be the character that's pinned against people people that were eventually supposed to lose a lot of sympathy for in Whitney and Asher when I really just don't like Kara's vibes at all. Now when Tanya the AD and Whitney are going to cast on the street for the show on the way they have an issue they have to address which is there is a crime that was reported someone was trying to steal jeans at one of the stores and it was Fernando who stopped the person but Whitney does not want this she does not want the image that they're arresting locals and calling the police on them so she tells the girl who works at the jean store she will pay directly from her credit card for any theft that's happened just charge a card don't call the police so these are the lengths like her changing a news headline she will go to to keep an image up here and you also see she's trying to control things that are just out of her control. It drives her nuts even to the point where she goes to get coffee from Fernando and he turns around to pour the coffee and he's still packing heat here. So that obviously is gonna deter her even more and anger her, but it's just showing you someone like this who's trying to make this like false utopia just can't happen. Now there's a point to when Whitney nudges Kara to sign the release for her artwork to be used in the show. She's like, oh, I'll get to that. And you just know that she's never gonna get to that. So that's gonna be a thing where they probably gonna have to blur out half the artwork in the show. You also see when they bring in these people that Whitney still can't talk to these people to go on the show herself. She has Tanya do it. It's when Whitney is very weird and a lot like Asher and she's watching from a distance and she's like, oh, don't point to me this time. It looks like I'm spying on them, which is exactly what she's doing. And she likes the guy with long hair. She likes the woman with the baby. So she wants to pair them together and him ditch his girlfriend. But Tanya's like, no, he's refusing to do that. So 
she goes to talk to them Whitney and she just takes it lying down and he's like I'm not doing that and she's like okay and she throws Tanya completely under the bus right in front of her takes no responsibility for being the one with that idea I also want to mention about the framing in this episode one of my favorite shots as well was earlier on when they were arguing about rewording the letter and the contract that when Whitney and Asher are arguing there's a reflection of her in the passive home and her face is extremely distorted and those are big things because that directly connects to the next shot we'll see in the episode where when her parents arrive her parents come in and they're first seen distorted and it's connecting that visual of how this show is painting these characters as monsters and it is also showing how when you even see the cursed title cards I like to do that a lot with certain people's faces and you see her parents want to now be associated with these homes their PR person suggests it because they think it will make them be associated with something good for once but this is where Whitney's like flipping out like a spoiled child she's like these are my properties that's why I moved here I don't want you lording over me and it's so interesting when she exits that car yelling at them that it's shocking from such a far distance across a field so Dougie is filming that clearly or something else is going on with the curse who really knows now I think the funniest moment for a lot of people in this episode and it was definitely one of the best was when the man with the long hair breaks out into stand by me singing he's got to get his moment on TV here to show off his voice which was great so they get enough footage that she likes for the show and they can have a reasonable episode here for episode one but they still have the issue of having to find someone to buy the house because they're not actually the people buying the house and at lunch asher tells whitney the college girl is out and she's like well good we don't want the neighborhood filled with people whose rich parents bought them houses asher laughs at this and she goes what he's like oh i thought you were being self-deprecating call back also to his notes about self-deprecation and james corden which i love but she backtracks she's like no i was she clearly wasn't and she was literally just being hypocritical in saying that because she is that person and here he'll bring up mark rose again he's like i reached out to him which whitney was not happy about this really is just bringing him down in her eyes but he looks at his instagram he's like he was at the protest against the conquistador statue the caption it's a good day is there and she's like well there was white supremacists there there's a militia and they debate which side he was on and this episode being titled it's a good day is also showing you it's looking at this couple and you're debating in your head what side are they really really on at the end of the day now mark rose who is played by dean kane shows up it's also interesting when you see a character playing a character that has questionable political beliefs and in real life he's had questionable political beliefs so that's always fascinating but wit won't shake his hand and says she's sick what's crazy about that moment is she's clearly doing it because she doesn't like the guy doesn't believe in this it's against what she believes in but later on asher when they go home says are you still feeling sick it's just showing you how unaware he is right that there's just something off with this guy and i had mentioned in a previous episode that that happened with abshir when he was like pulling him aside to tell him something about his daughter and he's like i gotta show you something at the end of that conversation he's like well what did you have to show me he just the social cues aren't there and i love throughout this scene with mark rose is that there's this horror music playing just the same horror music that was playing when asher and whitney's father were talking about cherry tomatoes and you see wit is walking like a zombie back with asher and he's excited like they're gonna get this deal and i love how they film this because when they're walking back inside their house it's filmed so that the fence comes into frame and it's filmed like a prison yard with a prison fence there just sticking with that theme of this house they're in being a prison and then asher says in the bedroom the app says you're at peak fertility today this is an insane thing to say not get someone in the mood and he says you're not upset about selling to mark are you and she's like if i was upset you would know it but this is the problem with asher that he might get hints at it but he doesn't really know it at the end of the day how much he's lost whitney already at this point this is like a breaking point here and it's gonna be to see how much they divide now like whitney feels like she's sold her soul now and of course asher opens the window a crack so it's a nice call back to to talking about how hot it gets in those passive homes so i'm gonna give this episode an 8.7 i thought it was very good but it wasn't my favorite at this point in the season because now we're halfway through and i still feel like there are points now where i'm starting to feel real repetitiveness with some of the themes going on and that knowing this is 10 episodes i do want to pick up a little more with the pace and i'm still questioning about certain characters i want to get a little more now about dougie he's been so mysterious but 
I think we need to know more from his perspective at this point. And I just don't like this character of Kara, so I want to know more what they're actually doing with her because to me, she's insanely unlikable. Maybe that's just me, though. I'm curious your thoughts, So, What do you think of this episode? I think there's still a lot of good, a lot of great framing and cinematography in general, which the show is so good at. And of course, amazing acting and still some really, really funny moments. So let me know what you thought of it down below. I love to hear your thoughts. I read every comment. I try to respond as many as I can. And I'll see you next time.